Welcome to another video on ETS6. My name is Michael and together with my colleagues we have spent the last months in making ETS6 an even better experience for your daily KNX work. But I believe with adding these new functions you might not know all of these great features that were there now. And so I want to take a few minutes today and show you what we added in the past weeks and months. So let's jump into ETS. You see here at the top the carousel. This is not new, but what is new is here the great new products that are promoted and that are shown to you here. You can click on any of these and get a quick glance at what these products do, what's new and what's so great about these. So it's worth checking out, I tell you. Underneath that, we see the local projects and underneath that, we see the archive. And you see here what's different is my archive here is set to collaboration mode. You might wonder how do you get into collaboration mode. So you simply go to settings, data storage, and you activate collaboration mode. While you are here, you might also want to check out the linked folders. And what I have done here is, even though my archive is on my computer, I have also added another archive folder and I have added a Dropbox folder. And what that does now is, exiting out of this, I can drill down into the archive and I see these linked folders here. And that's great because I can rely on ETS project management tools. Um, and when I finish an archive, when I finish a project and put it into the archive, ETS then synchronizes it with Dropbox. And so I know it's secure um, using the Dropbox workflows as well. If I look back at the dashboard, I see here now the statuses of these projects. And you can see some are green, one is blue, one is red, and the ones down here have a lock. Now, what does the lock mean? The lock means I have locked these projects, and so I am the exclusive user of these projects. And so I, that by that, I make sure my projects are not edited by my colleagues without me knowing. Um, up here now, I see the status, and I see green is the project is in synchronization with my archive, so the same version in, in locally and in the archive. What does blue mean? Blue is when you go over there, you see local, I have a newer version of this project than I have in the archive. So what I should do is I should synchronize to the archive as soon as I'm finished. But then we have red. Now what does red mean? We have a conflict. Both of these versions, locally and archive, have been edited. So I can click on it, I can compare the versions, enter the project password, and I get this report. What I see here is everything underneath here is the same. So everything there is great. And then something was done on the archived version, which is not a problem. I should have then just synchronized that locally. But instead, I continued working on my local version. And now here we see a conflict. Now, luckily, these two entries here are the only changes in the archive. So I know what I should do. I should continue working and just redo these changes here locally. But with this information, I can make an educated decision on that. So closing out of here, let's look into this project. I have here a small demonstration. It's a secure project, so I need to enter the project password. And it opens up in the Buildings tab. In the Buildings, so in this tab on the Buildings panel, I have selected the root of the building, so I see all my devices here. And what I see at a glance is not all these devices have been downloaded. I also have search folders. And the most prominent one up here is the one with the cabinets. And so what that allows me to do is looking through all my cabinets. In this case, I have only one, even though these cabinets are hidden in my building structure. And what's even better is I can unfold these and I see the devices in my cabinet. So I can directly work on these devices, even though I don't know specifically where they are in the building. But I know in this case, they are in the basement in the hardware room. There's my cabinet. But I also have a ground floor. And on the ground floor, it's a very small building. I only have a living room, but I have a living room with some devices. And I see here, I have a CO2 sensor. I have a push button and I have a switching actuator. So in this case, let's look at the push button and the switching actuator together. And I see here, these have not been linked yet. So what we should do is we should add some group addresses. So let's do that. Let's go to the sidebar in the groups panel. Let's look at my functions here. And I see 
in the living room I have a function. So let's just link that to here and to here. And the status, of course, I want to link also. And what you see is by linking these group addresses, they become secure because these devices are secure capable. And now these group addresses, they will be communicated in a secure, can secure fashion. So now, of course, now really something needs to be downloaded. So let's do that. I go to this switching actuator and you can see here I have a serial number added for that device. That's because I added a certificate. But also on this device I have the same, even though um, a certificate is already added and I have the serial number here. But also for this device a serial number is added. Um, that can be done just by clicking here, even though it's a non can execute device. So now let's start downloading this device. Download individual address and what you can see here is, as you might know it, ETS tells you to press the programming button. But this device is in my living room, so instead of that I will use the new edit function of downloading via the serial number. Because ETS has the serial number for this device, I can simply press this button here and then ETS takes care of that for me. And finished. Now I will simply say download application. Now there's of course a little bit more that needs to be communicated than just the address, so the download of the application takes a little bit longer. While we're doing that, we can also already check into our cabinet and we can take a look at the interface. We have here an IP interface and let's say we have on the networking systems, on the, on the IPv4 network of the building, we have a visualization, KNX visualization. And how do these group addresses travel to that visualization, securely especially? Well, this interface has some secure tunnels and what I can do is I can associate group addresses to these tunnels and by that I tell ETS to make sure that all the line couplers um, are forwarding these group addresses to this tunnel. So I don't have to manually edit filter tables, uh, I can just tell ETS where a group address needs to go and by that ETS handles all that for me and checks all the filter tables. I see the downloads have finished, so now let's add some more group addresses here. We can just go, let's just add the entire collection here and you can see here now these group addresses because I linked them to a device that is secure capable, these group addresses are also communicated securely here. So ETS takes care of all of that for me. So that's bus interface associations. Now you saw that I did finish um, these downloads, oh, actually I need to download also the group addresses. And what you see here now is I'm finishing these downloads while I am on the automated interface selection. So I did not select an interface. The device is, the interface is uh, in my home, in my network here, yes. Uh, it's an IP network, but ETS fetches the information automatically from the project simply by me adding the device to the project with its um, serial number and its FDSK. And so ETS knows how to find this device and how to address it correctly. So I don't have to worry about selecting the correct interface. Now what else did we add to ETS? I can go there while I'm downloading. Let's look at topology. And you see here I have an IP backbone with an IP area and a twisted pair line. But on this twisted pair line I can of course add more. I can add a segment. I can add my RF segment. What this RF segment allows me because it is part of my IP, my twisted pair line, it's simply an extension of that. And so I can now add a media coupler to that uh, by adding a device and it would open the catalog. And now I can simply add an RF segment somewhere on my line and extend my KNX installation by that. 
What I can also do since the introduction of KNX IoT, I can add an IoT line. And you can see that here, I'll simply add an IoT line. And with this, I can of course add the newest KNX IoT devices, which are communicating in IPv6 natively. And what's great about that is that these devices, while they are new uh, coming to the market very, very soon, they are just another medium type for you within ETS. And so very familiar for you to work with those. Now the downloads have finished. Let's see. Let's see what the status is of that group address. linked group address. I should check the correct one. So I can switch the group address on, of course, and I see automatically, um, I see the status coming back and I can switch the group address for off, of course, and I can hear the relay clicking. So that's a short overview of what's added, what's new in ETS. I can see here also my communication. The group monitor has started. It also selected the correct interface um, and I can see the communication here now too. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, stay tuned for more videos. Um, we are adding a new series of videos on yeah, the very early beginnings on the easy steps on the first steps in KNX and the first steps in ETS. So stay tuned, subscribe to our channel and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon again. Thank you.